Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to Week 9. In this lesson, we're going to continue looking at organic reactions, specifically addition reactions. So watch this video carefully now. Hello and welcome to our series on organic reactions. This series builds on the series about organic molecules. These are the reactions we will deal with in this series. Addition reactions, elimination reactions, substitution reactions, and polymers. We will look at some of the concepts such as how unsaturated molecules can take part in addition reactions. That saturated molecules can undergo the elimination reactions. That parts of organic molecules can be exchanged in substitution reactions. We already know about organic molecules and the vast variety of molecules that can be made by chains of carbon atoms with other atoms that are added to them. The simplest way to make organic molecules is to add two smaller parts together. We call this type of reaction addition. In this type of reaction, we start with an unsaturated molecule like ethene. Unsaturated molecules have double bonds. The double bond breaks and makes new bonds to other substances. So when the ethene joins with the molecule marked A, B, one of the double bonds breaks to make space for the atoms marked A and B. Look at how the product contains only single bonds between the carbon atoms. This means that addition reactions make saturated products. Why would we want to make unsaturated molecules into saturated molecules? You might recall that a molecule's structure and size affects its shape and thus its properties. A liquid substance like this sunflower oil can become a solid, like this margarine. This margarine says that it contains hydrogenated vegetable oil. What could this mean? Simply put, this means that hydrogen molecules have been added to the unsaturated sunflower oil and the product is a saturated oil. This is how margarine is made. So we can artificially add hydrogen to molecules which contain double bonds. Ethene has a double bond. When hydrogen is added to it, the double bond in ethene breaks and makes space for the hydrogen atoms. This process is called hydrogenation. This particular reaction needs a catalyst like platinum or nickel. These metals help the hydrogen to add on across the double bond. High temperature makes the reaction faster. Now the molecule is saturated and called ethane. Does that mean that only hydrogen can be added to double bonds? Of course not. Let's see what else we can add to an unsaturated molecule. When we add a halogen to an unsaturated molecule, the halogen quickly adds across the double bond in the unsaturated molecule. In fact, this is a good way to test for an unsaturated molecule. You might remember this. Philip will show us how it's done. Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying the lesson so far. Let's see if we can use some simple chemicals to tell if a molecule is saturated or unsaturated. Let's start off with the chemicals. Hexane and hexene. Can you tell from the names which one is saturated? We use bromine to test for an unsaturated compound like hexene. Bromine is a very dangerous chemical and can't be used alone. So first, we've added it to a solvent called carbon tetrachloride. We add the red-brown bromine mixture to the hexane first. Hmm. It seems that nothing happens to the color of bromine when it's added to the hexane. Let's try hexene and see what happens. Once again, we add the same number of drops of the bromine solution to the hexene. Let's check that. Wow, this is interesting. It seems that when we add bromine to unsaturated hexene, the bromine color quickly disappears we have a useful test for unsaturated hydrocarbons, whether they are alkenes or other types of molecules. 
when bromine is mixed with an unsaturated compound, bromine's color quickly disappears. Now, I'm sure you've heard all about saturated fats and unsaturated fats. This tub of margarine says that it contains polyunsaturated compounds. These apparently help to keep your heart healthy. Here, I have margarine that I've heated and added to a solvent. Now let's add the bromine. Interesting, the color disappears again. So it would seem that this margarine contains unsaturated hydrocarbons. Philip, that was a great demo. Let's draw the molecules to make sure we understand the experiment. This type of reaction is called a halogenation because we add a halogen molecule. Unlike the addition of hydrogen, halogens add quickly and without the need to heat the reactants. The product is a clear, colorless compound which explains why the brown color disappears and this is the test for unsaturated compounds. We've seen that addition can occur with hydrogen in hydrogenation, while bromine or another halogen is added during halogenation. What if we add a molecule that contains both a halogen and hydrogen? We call this hydrohalogenation. In this example, hydrogen bromide is added to propene. Look at how the double bond breaks and allows the hydrogen and bromine to bond the carbon atoms. The product is 2-bromopropane and is once again a saturated hydrocarbon. Did you notice that the bromine atom attached to the middle carbon? Is there any other way that hydrogen bromide can add to propene? That's right, the hydrogen and bromine can attach in two ways. We can also add the hydrogen to the middle carbon atom and bromine to the carbon atom at the end. In this way, we make one bromopropane. It turns out that we make two bromopropane than one bromopropane when we mix hydrogen bromide with propane. We can predict which one will be made in greater amounts. This is called Markovnikov's rule. Markovnikov's rule says that in the addition of molecules that contain hydrogen bonded to another atom, the hydrogen atom attaches to the carbon atom with the most hydrogen atoms bonded to it. The carbon atom in the middle is called a secondary carbon because it is bonded with two other carbon atoms. It has the least number of hydrogen atoms bonded to it. The carbon atom at the end is bonded with one other carbon atom and two hydrogen atoms. This means that bromine attaches to the middle carbon atom because it has fewer hydrogen atoms attached. The hydrogen attaches to the carbon with the most attached hydrogen atoms. The next type of reaction adds something we all know about, water. Let's write the addition reaction between water and propene in the same way that we added hydrogen bromide. First, try to draw the structure or formulae for the reaction. When we add water to propene, we look at water as being made up of two different parts, an H atom in the one part and OH in the other part. When water is added to the double bond, the double bond breaks and accepts these two parts. One of the carbon atoms joins onto the hydrogen atom and the other to the OH portion. When we add water, we call this process hydration. This needs a sulfuric acid catalyst to get the addition reaction to take place. The product is an alcohol, propan 2 ol It's a very useful alcohol and you might recognize the smell of surgical spirits or whiteboard cleaner when you smell it. Remember that water could also add the other way around. Can you draw the product? We know that the hydrogen atom in water attaches to the carbon in the double bond with the most hydrogen atoms. Propan 1 ol and propan 2 ol can both be formed during this reaction. So, which alcohol is produced in greater quantities? That's right, propan 2 ol 
with the OH on the second carbon is the preferred product. Sometimes this is called the major product as more of it is made. Let's just stop and take a moment to review the different types of addition. Remember that we name the type of addition based on what we add. When we add hydrogen, this process is called hydrogenation. When we added halogen, we called it halogenation. Can you see the pattern? So, when adding a hydrohalogen, it is called hydrohalogenation. That's a mouthful, but it's easy if you understand where the word comes from. The last type of addition we looked at was hydration when we added water. It's easy to remember that when you need to hydrate, you add water to yourself. You might ask why there is a plastic cup in my hand. Well, it's the product of a very special type of addition reaction that has changed the world. Polymers, or plastics as they are called, are chemicals that are made by bonding many smaller molecules into much longer chains. These long chains become solid and are made of long tangled chains. But how do addition reactions make these compounds? It's quite simple. It starts with double bonds like every other type of addition. The plastic cup is made from many small ethene molecules that have undergone addition with one another. One of the double bonds breaks to add a new ethane molecule and extends the carbon chain. When you do this enough times, you can get carbon chains that are over a million carbon atoms long. If you look at your plastic ruler or pen, remember that millions of small and saturated molecules underwent addition to make the molecules inside it. To sum it all up, addition reactions follow one pattern. An unsaturated compound combines with another to make a larger molecule. So we can use addition to build molecules up to a larger size and put new atoms onto the carbon chain. All we need is an unsaturated hydrocarbon and another molecule. Let's predict the products formed in A, B, C, and D. We start with A. When we add pentuene, what product is formed in A? The answer to A is the saturated molecule. Pentane. And when bromine is added, the answer to B is 1,2-dimopropentane is formed. If water is added in the presence of sulfuric acid, molecules C and D are formed. C is the major product, pentan 3 ol while molecule D is the minor product, pentan 2 ol until next time, check out the other videos as well as the task video and look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.